Chapter 1C, Describing Distributions, Shape, Center, and Spread. So we are going to be working on developing our vocabulary to describe histograms, and we're going to learn how to locate the median. These are concepts we'll be using all semester. Take some time to read through the why, the learning objectives for this activity, and the vocabulary. Notice in the vocabulary section, I sketched a picture for left tail distribution. You can see the graph of the distribution is not symmetric. We've got a tail out here on the left. This is also known as a left skew distribution. Similarly, the right tail distribution or right skew distribution has a tail out on the right side. We're going to be looking at two ways to describe the center of a distribution. So the median is known as the midpoint, and we'll use a capital M to denote the median. The mean is the average, and we'll use x with a bar on top to denote the mean. The standard deviation, when we talk about a sample standard deviation, we use lowercase s. When we talk about a population standard deviation, we use sigma, this Greek letter. It is the Greek s. Sometimes you'll see I abbreviate it with sd for standard deviation, and that's going to describe the spread of the data. So let's start with example one. This is data from monsoons in India. The measurements are in millimeters. These are 23 strong El Nino years from 1871 to 2004. And so when we look at the data, we see it's not sorted. So we want to first determine what's the minimum monsoon and what's the maximum. So you can either type this in the stat crunch and sort it or eyeball through the list to find that the minimum is 604 millimeters and the maximum is 957 millimeters. So based on this knowledge, we want to think about what is the best bin size for our histograms. So we could count by 20s, 50s, or 100s, and those would all be reasonable histograms. So let's go over to StatCrunch. So you can see the monsoon rain is here in this column. And if we wanted to sort that, we would go to data, sort, and then you choose your column monsoon rains. And I'm going to have it sort ascending from smallest to largest. And compute, and what it's done is made me a new column over here of the sorted monsoon rains, and we can verify the minimum value is 604 millimeters, and the maximum value is 957 millimeters. So now let's make some histograms with the different bin sizes. So we go to graph, histogram, and we choose the monsoon rains column. And then I'm going to have my bins start at, say, 600, because our minimum was 604 millimeters. And then since our max goes all the way up to 957, I'm going to say the width will be 20s. And let's see how that histogram looks. So we see here we've got a peak in the 780 to 800 bar. And then the rest looks kind of flat. So let's try making a new histogram with bin size 50. So we'll start again at 600, but make our bin width 50 and see if that groups any differently. So we can see here we've got more data grouped together, and this actually lets us see the shape a little bit better. Um, it looks like we've got a little bit of a left clump over here, and then maybe the tails out to the right because there's one, one value out here. If we do bin size 100, let's say we can go to options, edit in either of these histograms, and change our bin width from 20 to 100, this gives us a similar shape. So I would say any of these three bin sizes are reasonable. Let's look what happens if we edit the bin size and go up to 200 as our bin width. So notice we get two bars here with all the data clumped together. This is sometimes called skyscrapers, and it's to be avoided. So we don't want to have too few bins so that we end up with two tall skyscrapers. Similarly, let's look what would have happened if we had done our bin size at 10. 
So I'm just going into options, edit, and changing the bin size on these. This is sometimes called pancakes because if we stretch it out, we see a whole bunch of bars that are just height one, and we're not able to see the shape of the distribution super well. So I like bin size 50, so I'm going to leave my graph like this. And you could put a sketch here or copy and paste a picture or save it to your computer. So we said it looks roughly symmetric and we had that one value that was high out here. But let's see, I guess overall the shape looks like it's going slightly to the left. If we really want to check, I'm going to go into options, edit, and put the markers in for the mean and the median. And see how that green marker for the mean is a little bit on the left side. That tells me the mean's a little bit lower than the median, the red line. And so that's what's telling me this is a slight left tail. You could also describe this as roughly symmetric, and I'd be okay with that because we see the mean and the median are pretty close to each other. So we want to sort in order and we did that already and then figure out what number falls in the middle so let's look back at our sorted data i'll move this off to the side actually i'll just exit out of it so in our sorted data there are 23 data points so the middle is going to be the 12th data point you could think about well what's 23 divided by 2 that's 11 and a half and then if we round up the 12th spot will be in the middle and so we see here is this value 784 millimeters. So that's our midpoint or our median. If we go back to results and pull up that histogram, if I hover my mouse over the red line, the red marker, we see the median is 784 millimeters. So either way, putting the marker on the graph, sorting the data, or a third way is if you go to stat, summary stat, choose columns, monsoon rains, and then we can select not everything, we'll just select the median and compute. And here's yet another calculation. Our median is 784 millimeters. We can also use stem plots to find the median. I think stem plots are a great technique if you have just a little bit of data or if you are um, without a calculator or computer. So here is the flower lengths of 16 beehive tropical flowers rounded to the nearest tenth, and these are measured in millimeters. And we're going to create a stem plot. So we're told the stem should be the first two digits of the number, and the leaf is the last digit, which is in this case the tenths place. So one thing you can do is plot the data in numerical order. The other option is to do a first draft and then recopy your stem plot so that it goes numerically. So since our lowest value is 46.3, you'll see I started the stems at 46, and then this 3 over here tells me that's a data point that has 3 in the tenths place and 46 as the whole number part. And we go all the way up to 50 because our highest value is 50.3. So you can see if I was working down the list, 47.1 is here, 46.8 is over here, 47.1 again comes up here. So we can write down the data sorted like this. So the median is going to be in the middle. So you can see here we have 16 data points. So the middle is between the eighth and the ninth data point. So if we count over, remember each one of these tenths place is a data point. We count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, so the midpoint or the median is between the eighth and the ninth data point. Now in this case, they're both 47.1. So when we add those up and divide by two, we get the same value, 47.1 millimeters. How would we describe the shape? You might rotate your head and say, it looks like this has a right tail or a right skew. Imagine drawing it as a histogram and rotating it this way. If you wanted to make the stem plot in StatCrunch, let me remind you how we could do that. So we've got our beehive flower lengths in this column. So you can go to graph, stem and leaf plot, select beehive flower lengths, and then we want the leaf unit to be the 10th. So pick 
0.1 for leaf unit and compute. And you can see this is exactly a match for what we've got drawn out. Since there's no values in 49, you still want to leave the 49 in there as a stem because you want to show any gaps or breaks in the data. Make sure you're not jumping from 48 to 50. See in our hand-drawn stem plot, we also have that gap. It shows us where there's a break in the data. So we say this is a right tail or a right skew distribution. And then this is how we found the median, the 47.1 and 47.1 were averaged. So when there are two center data points, we take an average. There's two because we had 16 data points. So anytime you have an even number of data points, you're going to have two center values to average. And so we get our mean median is 47.1 millimeters. If we wanted to compare that to the mean, we could go back into stat crunch and we could go stat summary stats column choose beehive flower links and then I can hold down mean and then hold down command or control if you're on a Mac or a PC and also select the median and here we see our median is a 47.1 that we calculated and our mean is a little bit higher 47.58 Example three gives commute times for randomly chosen workers in downtown San Francisco. And so again, we want to find the median. So we start with a stem plot. And so in this stem plot, we have decided to put the ones value in the leaf and the tens value in the stem. So our stems go from zero to seven. So this value here, the person who had a five minute commute has zero in the tens place and five in the ones place. So here, again, we have an even number of data points. So when we want to find the median, the median is going to be between the 10th and the 11th data point. So we count out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We see here the median is between 48 and 49 minutes. So when we add these up and divide by 2, we find the median is 48.5. So 48.5 isn't a data point in our data list. So the median isn't one of the data points. It's like a fence here between 48 and 49 minutes. So now to find the mean, we add them up and average. If you want to do it in StatCrunch, you could follow these directions here, just like we did in the flower data. You go to stat, summary, stats, column, and then choose mean. So let me show you how we do that real quick. So you go stat, summary stats, columns, and these are the SF commute times, and then we just choose the mean. And stat crunch has quickly added them all up and divided by 20 for us to get that 44.35. And so that's the mean of our sample. And then how does the mean compare to the median? So remember the median was 48.5 minutes. The mean is a little bit lower at 44.35 minutes. So in this case, we say the mean is less than the median. And notice our distribution is a left skew or a left tail. If you come back and look at our stem plot here, you see there's a tail out to the left side. So now let's go make our histogram in StatCrunch, and we're told to use bin sizes 10. So let's head back over to StatCrunch, and we'll make a histogram. We are looking to SF commute times. We're going to start at zero and make our bin width 10 and compute. And we can see pretty well here, there's that left tail or left skew, just like we saw from the stem plot. So the stem plot and the histogram both show the shape. If we want to go to options edit, we can put in those markers for the mean and the median. And I leave them as green and red, but you can change the colors to any color you'd like for the markers. So Maybe you want to make the mean a little bit of a brighter teal. And so we see here the mean is to the left of the median, and that corresponds with the left skew of the graph. The reason is, is because there's a few low values pulling the mean down. Remember, the mean's the average, so if you've got a few low values, that pulls it down whereas the median is the center point. 
So the few low values create the tail on the left side and they lower the mean. So we have this relationship in general. When the mean is less than the median, a few low values pull the average down and these low values give a left skew or a left tail distribution. So let's look at example four. These are commute times for workers in Concord, again, randomly chosen, and again, 20 workers. So we want to find the median. So I wrote a stem plot here again. My stems are the tens place. My leaves are the ones place. So you can see there are two workers who have a five minute commute, one worker who has a six minute commute. And so to find the median, we count out again between the 10th and the 11th data points. So if we count out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, we see it's between 18 and 18. So remember, the median is like a fence in the middle of the data points when you've got an even number of data points. It's not just one of these values. So if we add these up, 18 plus 18 divided by 2 gives us a median of 18 minutes. And if we look at the shape, we see the graph looks like it has a right tail or a right skew. So I'm expecting these few high values out here to pull the mean up. So if we find the mean, we can go in stack crunch and do that, we get 22.4 minutes. So we go to stat, summary stats, columns, we choose Concord commute times, and we want just the mean and compute, and there's our 22.4 minutes. So in this case, the median is smaller than the mean, so the mean is pulling the tail out to the right. So we say we have a right skew or a right tail. Let's go double check this on the histogram. So we go to histogram, and these are the conquered commute times. And let's have our bins go by tens again. We'll start at zero. And we see here, just as we saw in the stem plot, there is a right tail. And if we want to put the markers on here, options edit, choose our markers for mean and median. We see the mean is on the right side, indicating that a few high values are pulling the mean up and creating that right tail. So for summary, we can say when the median is less than the mean, a few high values pull the average of the mean up and these high values give the distribution the right tail shape. Example five is an understanding check. So we're asked which of the following distributions is likely to have a mean that is smaller than the median. So remember when the mean is smaller, that means there's a few low values. So answer choice A is repeated measurements of the volume of soda in a one liter bottle. So I put a note to the side that this would be a symmetric distribution for the most part. If you're measuring the same bottle of soda, you would have maybe some small discrepancies in your measurements, but you don't expect big differences between each measurement if it's the same soda bottle. The scores on an easy exam, in which most are A's and B's, but a few are F's, well, that's a situation where you're gonna have a few low grades, but most grades are gonna be high. So that sounds to me like a left skew or left tail. Choice C says the salaries of Major League Baseball players. So Major League Baseball players, most players make around the league minimum salary, and then there's a few players that make a lot of money. So that is a right tail or right skew situation. So we say this is a scenario when we expect the mean to be less than the median. In other words, the average is going to be less than the midpoint. So on a test where most score high, a few low scores pull the average down, but the middle is still relatively high, A or B. So answer choice B is our best selection here. Example 5B says a news article reports that of the 411 players on National Basketball Association rosters in February 1998, only 139 made more than the league average salary of $2.36 million. The word average is often use, loosely used, so both the median and the mean are measures of an average or a center. So we want to figure out, is this 2.36 million they're referencing the mean or the median? So we have to ask ourselves, well, what's the middle? So 
if we think about it, there's 411 players, right? So if we do 411 divided by 2, that's 205.5. So the 206 player has the median or the middle salary. So that means that 206 player is the middle, and then 205 players make more and 205 players make less. So because there's an odd number of players, 411, there's just one middle value here, right? So if you think about it, there's 205 less than the median. There's uh, one basketball player who's the median, the 206 player. And then there's 205 who make a higher salary to add up to 411. So they told us that only 139 made more than this 2.36 million. So the 2.36 million must be the mean salary since 139 is less than half making more. So in this case, we know we have a high mean. So since the mean is not in the middle point, not at 206, we have a right tail distribution. So we say we know the median would be a lower value than the mean. When we talk about the spread of a distribution, we use a standard deviation definition to calculate that. So here's how we calculate the standard deviation by hand. Typically, we're going to let StatCrunch do that for us. If you want to go back to StatCrunch and say we want to know the standard deviation for the commute times for Concord, we can go to Stat, Summary, Stats, Columns, and choose our Concord commute times. And then standard deviation is one of our choices here for statistics. And so StatCrunch was able to quickly calculate us that the standard deviation is 14.29169 minutes. If you look at the graph for our Concord commute times, what this is saying is from the middle, either of these measures, if we stretch out the graph, 14 minutes would be, let's see, this is... 22, that'd be right around 34 right here. And then if we come out another 14 minutes, we're near the end of our distribution. And similarly, if we come down 14 minutes, we'd be right about here. And then down another 14 minutes takes us to the bottom of our distribution. So typically, most of the values should be within two measures of the standard deviation.